Now I want to do that little part. These are the fun ones. This is when you start seeing it all kind of come together, come to life. I want some really good darks, good variety. Going again with that ultramarine blue. I'm going to mix some carbazo violet in there. And let's go with a hooker's green over here and get a grayed down purple color. Grabbing some burnt orange. I like that with the carbazo violet too. It gives us a nice chocolatey color. The key word in here is variety, and I already have some of these that I used earlier. I'm just gonna reactivate them with some water. I don't wanna spray it because then there's gonna be too much water on there. Rather than the Opera, I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna go right over the top of it with a Quinacridone Magenta. So these colors are kind of on standby. I'm gonna start dark and pop in color. Right there is a little teal, cobalt teal blue, Daniel Smith. Okay, I think I've got what I need. I wanna add a little bit more blue to that. Okay, so I'm gonna use some, actually, right down here, I just want a little line of moisture. The reason for that is so that I don't end up with a hard edge here. I don't want a hard edge. Okay, so I'm just gonna start by grabbing my colors and even leaving some broken edges like that is just perfectly, perfectly fine. I'm dipping into my water, get it a little wetter. There's a little bit of a door kind of something there. Right up here, I'm gonna get a little bit of thicker pigment and darken that where it's right under the eave. And mix a little bit of that very dry gold ochre, yellow ochre. Pop in a little bit of that here and there. Find a little bit of that cobalt teal. Put a little of that in there. Just as giving me some interest. I don't want to do too much here. That was just a little bit more orangey that I wanted, but. That also is okay, so. I'm liking the um, dark there, and I'm just bringing that out to soften it a little bit. I kind of have an idea of what I want to do in here. So, I want to soften that so it doesn't like interfere with my next layer, I guess you could say. A little bit more cobalt blue here. 
I'm just going to kind of pop that in. Don't want to do too much here because I like what happened. Yes, I'm going to leave that alone and let it dry. Okay, you guys, so we are at the, I love everything that's going on here. Um, haven't quite figured out what I want to do over here, but I want to put in the foreground here. And this is kind of a make or break it kind of moment. I'm going to do something I haven't really done in a painting before. Um, and it's using granulation medium and granulating pigment and salt. So those three are gonna be what I do for my foreground. I, I oh, yes, so it's a little bit, um, a little bit intimidating when you like something and if you put in another area that you don't like, all of a sudden the work that's gone into this seems like you wasted time, but that's not true. So even if this doesn't turn out the way I'm hoping it does, um, I've still learned and grown from the experience of painting this picture. So I'm going to be, let's see. Okay, do you see this? I did this last night. Yesterday I had a day of just feeling a little bit discouraged. I felt like I had a block. I wasn't, um, nothing was coming out the way I wanted it to. So at the end of the night, I just got a scrap piece of paper and put down some color and put some granulation medium into it and salt over the top and I went to bed and I really love the way this came out. Also, I was like, well, too bad I made it so small <laughs> because you, I could totally, I could totally frame it. But then I just have these little scrap pieces of, not scrap. I I cut them out intentionally to you know for stuff like this where I put it together, and you can actually have a cool little painting. You know, if you crop it down, this would be a fun little element in a maybe a bathroom or something like that. So I really liked the way that looked. And let me get it a little closer for you. You can see the, hopefully you can see that, the granulation in there. That's from the paint and from the granulation medium, okay? So I had been watching a video and the uh, artist was using granulation medium. And I thought, well, that's really cool. She was using an eyedropper. And I thought, I don't have an eyedropper. I would like to try that. I just dabbed it in with a brush, which is perfectly fine, except that um, you have to stick your brush in this and then you get paint on it. But you could also pour this into another container, but then you have to ended up end up throwing excess away so she was using an eyedropper and like I said I didn't have one so I had an empty eye um eye drops bottle bottle that contained eye drops that were gone so I took the label off and put the granulation medium into that and I was careful to label it granulation medium and also not eye drops don't put this in your eye so that's what I'm going to be using. And then I've got just um, kosher salt, I think this is. It's a little coarser in texture. So I'll be uh, dropping that in, and hopefully that'll be a success. The thing with salt is it has to be at the right level of dryness or uh, wetness, I guess, both of those, because if it's too wet, that salt is just going to dissolve and you're not going to know it's there. It's not going to do anything. If it's too dry, same thing. You're not going to get uh, the effect that you want. But if it's just right, um, that salt can make some really cool texture. Like, like uh, it didn't really show up in that as much, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. So let's get started. Um, I think I'm going to grab that number 12 brush again, because I have a bigger area. 
I want to get this um, covered with the paint as quick as I can, dropping in variety of colors. I'm using Daniel Smith Primatech colors. I've got Tiger's Eye Genuine. I've got Hematite Burnt Scarlet, Sodalite, Hemolite, uh, Jadeite, Serpentine Genuine, as well as um, some other greens I've got uh, ready to go, green gold, and um, I put a little bit of yellow ochre into my uh, tiger's eye. So I don't have another palette or I would be showing you it's on my big palette. So let's get started just putting this color in and see what happens. Tiger's eye is kind of a brownish grayed down I guess you could say um and actually it wasn't it was raw sienna that I put into that so I just got it a little bit more yellow and then I also have a little bit of nickel azo yellow because I want some brighter areas too okay so I'm just gonna start I'm just gonna start so Tiger's eye, and that's mixed with that's mixed with the raw sienna, and I've got a little bit of soda light there. Oops, paper towel. Oh my gosh! No way! <sighs> see that? What did I just do? <laughs> no, 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 no. You guys, oh my gosh. That just ruined the whole sky. Or did it? Let's just get it up as fast as we can. That is the long handled brush problem, I think. Well, I'm just gonna keep going because like I said, <laughs> there's a little bit of um, warm in that sky, right? Okay, that's what we're going for. Okay, so dab that out. We're gonna pretend like that just didn't happen. And as I was cleaning, that settled in. So darn. That's what I get for trying to go super fast. Okay, so maybe this granulation medium is going to save me. So what I'm going to do is just drop it in. I'm going to tip it up a little bit too so we get some movement. And that's going to be pushing away the paint, hopefully. Grab that paper towel again. I can't believe that that happened. I can. I can believe it happened. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm going to keep working like nothing big, no big deal, no big deal. I do want to soak up a little bit of that though. I can soften that. I also liked the <laughs> titanium, the buff titanium. I'm going to drop a little of that in. Maybe up there. Hematite. Let's go. 
Oh, that's a little too much. Uh, more green. Look at that. You can hardly even tell it was there. I'm actually not liking that too much. So I'm going to just kind of blob that out. Get a little bit more. Movement happening here. Actually like that jadeite in there. I'm going to get a little bit more of the tiger's eye. I'm going to get some more of the serpentine, which is a really cool granulating color. I'm going to come right down. And some green gold. This is actually the perfect little droplet. Just don't put it in your eye. I'm do more jadeite over here. And I think I would like a little titanium white in there. And I've got some undulations in my paper, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to tip it up on its side and go with it. You know what, I, I'm actually liking that a lot. So I'm not real happy with that in there, but we're gonna reserve judgment. A little bit too much water in here, but some of these, it's gotta have a sheen on it. Um, but not drippy, puddly wet. And I'm thinking I don't want too much over here because it's more distant. So I'm just holding it about two and a half inches above the paper. And now the trick with this is we've got to let it completely, completely dry. No hair dryer, no nothing. It's just got to dry on its own. And then we'll see if uh, anything magical happened. 
Well, let's see the great unveiling. Uh, Is that the right way? <laughs> yeah. We're going to unveil. We're going to remove the salt. So check out what it looks like now. I actually don't think it did too much, but that's okay because I kind of like, you know, the way it looks anyway. And look. I was able to get the splatters pretty much gone. You can't even see. But uh, yeah, that was a little frightening after working on this all day long. Um, so I'm going to grab my handy dandy old credit card to scrape off this salt. And it's com it is completely dry. You got to be careful. Make sure that the paint is dry underneath as well. So underneath the salt. And it's a little bit messy, so I'm gonna get um, I'm gonna get my garbage can right under and see if I can't corral most of it in there. Make sure to get all of it off for the most part. If you don't get all of it and you go over it with a little bit of water, it will dilute. It's not going to stay on there. So, All right, well, there's a little bit of texture. I could say a little bit. Some evidence of where the salt was. So um, I'm just going to keep on moving forward with this. There's not a lot left to do. Um, so let's see, I'm going to grab this little guy again. I think I want to actually get a little bit of some bright, bright green. So I'm going to put a little bit of Hansa yellow and just kind of go over couple of areas. This, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do there. And I'm adding a little bit more of that raw sienna. And I think what I, what I will do, here's what I'll do. Remember that blending brush I was talking about? This is probably the perfect opportunity to just blend out that color and it is a Princeton as well so I'm just gently and you can see some of that paper is lifting that's what I was talking about it's so stiff that it lifts some of the paper now that shouldn't be a problem this is um, I believe that Saunders Waterford is internally sized, so taking a little bit off that surface isn't going to make a huge difference. So that's all I'm going to do there. I'm just going to take a bit of that off and then probably come over here with some, some of this blue on my palette and add a little bit of green to it and a little bit of that opera. I just want a really um, distant, hazy looking color back here. As if there were maybe some trees back in here, maybe a little bit more green. I've got a little bit of that mixture over there that I had used for this foreground. I'm going to just put it right along that back edge. I imagine that it might be a little bit darker on that side of the building. A little bit of a shadow. Okay, so 
I'm gonna stop there on the side and what do I wanna do next? I wanna darken up the shed here a little bit. Kinda of going with the colors I already have on here. I'm just You can hear my brush, and that is a good um, indicator that I've got a dry brush by the sound it makes. If you're trying to put a wet wash on and you hear that sound, that's not a good thing. Now you see how that made that window stand out a little bit without outlining it? And I am just gonna touch in the ever so slightest, ever so slight. And a couple little, couple little lines there. A couple little lines in the roof. Roof, roof, roof. Give that a little pop. And careful not to drag my hand in it. I'm going to come over here and do just a slight line. A little bit darker under here. Add some more depth to that. Soften it up. I'm just going to indicate a little bit of line where those siding boards are. Not being too precious about it, not being too careful. This building up here, I believe, is, is more of the um, paneling, it's just so lit up that you can't really see how gray it is. So the lines are going vertical on this one too with a couple of horizontal ones here and there. I'm not gonna do every single one. It just gives it more interest if you limit that and also when I am doing these I don't want to add black I want to just I want to kind of stick with the color of the building so it's like some of those are going to be a little bit darker the building is white and sunlit so to add a little more kind of like the um, more of the dry brush stroke gives it a little sparkle and I think that that garage actually is not it's more smooth wood, it's more like a panel. It's not like the uh, siding. My paint is pretty dried out here, but I don't want to get it too wet. So I'm being real careful about that. Um, here, I want it to come right here. That's like a little darker in there. Okay, so another scary part can be these posts because it's such a, you wanna get a good stroke, so that means having enough color on your brush that's wet enough to carry you all the way down from top to bottom or bot bottom up. And this is fading up into the Pop here and I think I am just gonna get it wet 
so I can more carefully put that in and start in the middle. Why not? I'm probably not showing you very good because really should be dragging my arm down more like that. Then I'll dab in <clears throat> a little darker color here and there. I do like how that's faded out. And I'm going to just soften that as we come down. I want this to be a little bit darker. And I'm just going to let it fade out up here. And then <clears throat> and there's a post over here too. So on this one, I am gonna hold my brush down toward the ferrule, pull my arm down, and that's gonna help me keep a straight line. And I've left just the tiniest, tiniest white line on that left hand side. This over here, I think what I'll do is add uh, maybe with some gouache a little bit of a lighter edge, but for the most part, I'm just gonna leave that as is too. Um, and what else can we do here? I'm really just gonna leave this. I don't I don't know that I wanna do anything else to it, so I'm just gonna sit back and think about it for a while. Um, let these two dry a little bit, and then I'll get my long round. number two long round for the wires because I think we're ready to add those last details. So I want them grayish blue, darker than the sky, but not black. And we're gonna to need to be quick with our movements. So I can't be going like this. I need to swish it, swish it, and hope that I end up in the spot that I need to end up. So I need to go from here to here to here. Just like that. Ready? Here we go. I'm gonna go from here to here. That wasn't quite it, was it? To here, to here. There's a little hanger thing here. And 
there's some lines coming down so let's quick strokes And really, I don't want to get too carried away on that either, so. Just indicate a little bit of something that they're connected to, as well as this. Just looked funny, so. Just a little extra shadow there. Oh, I know what we need to do. Yes. Here I am thinking I'm all finished. But what we want to do is add our letters. Little tiny number one. Let's see if I can I'm not going to be able to read it, but you'll know that it's saying something. And right here, and I didn't finish the stairs either, so let's come right here. And give this little stoop a ledge. And a couple little windows over here. And we're going to call this done for the most part. I always say for the most part because then I do stuff like this. I'm going to just do one more thing. Because there's always seems to be one more thing that would make a difference. Little extra touches of dark to make it pop even more on these. Oh, I know. This is not gouache, but I think it'll do the trick. Okay, we are finished with this for this video. So I hope that you guys learned something from this. Um, and if you took something away from it and you can go apply this to one of your own paintings, that would be awesome. And also don't forget to hit subscribe if you um, want to see more videos. I try to get them out as often as I can. A um, little tricky with the work schedule, but I, I do my best. So thanks for tuning in, you guys. Hit subscribe and like, and we'll see you in the next video. Um, hopefully sooner than later. Take care. Happy painting. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.